Hey, so this is the Geek Protagonist uh, doing a movie review for Army of the Dead. Uh, so this is the zombie film that Zack Snyder has done. Uh, I think this is the first one he's done in uh, since the 2004 masterpiece that is Dawn of the Dead, the remake, which is, uh, to me, one of the greatest horror remakes ever. It's uh, one of the best uh, zombie films ever. It's actually, for a very, very long time, my favorite zombie film. Um, still, And I do still interchange uh, with it. One day I'll review it if you would like. But this movie has Batista. Uh, well, well, he's going by his actual name, Dave Baut uh, Bautista, but I still call him Batista. Uh, Ella Purnell, Anna de la Regruz, Omar Hardwick, Theo Rossi, Matthias Schwen, uh, Nora Arnazeter, Hiroki Sanada, Garrett Dillahunt, Tig Nataro, which is Mar Marianne Peters. Funny story, as I come to find out, she actually had to be CG'd in. Because the other actor couldn't finish the role. And apparently she didn't shoot any scenes with any of these people. And you would never tell. I actually found this out later when I was reading up on it. Uh, she did an excellent job. She's actually one of the key, to me, one of the key elements in the movie. Uh, besides Garrett Dillahunt. And who else? We have Raul Castillo, Huma Qureshi, Samantha Wynn. Which I'll explain who she is because I really like her. Uh, Zeus, Michael Cass, Groom, The Bride, Misty Hill, some other people. <laughs> so, so the movie is very well done. So, for example, one of my favorite characters uh, was actually played by Samantha Wynn. Uh, her full name looks like uh, she was formerly Samantha Joe. Yes, that's her name. Funny enough, she was in Man of Steel as Carvex, and she was in Wonder Woman as Yubuya. Now, what's interesting is is that I recognized her. Uh, she's been in both Wonder Woman, uh, both Wonder Woman movies. Uh, I think one was in the past, and one was current. And she was in uh, Zack Snyder's masterpiece, that is the uh, Snyder Cut Justice League, the real Justice League. So, a pretty strong cast. Now, what was smart is, is that when I looked into this, it was a, about a $90 million budget. And the smart part is, is that Batista being in this was like the big, you know, the big name. And it was his starring role. And I thought that was smart because it, it's great because he's like there and he's still getting there, if you get my drift. Like, even with Marvel and stuff. Like, he's big enough that it's like you put him in there, people know him. But he's not so huge that he's like the rocker Tom Cruise yet. But in this, Batista showed some some good range. Uh, he showed pain. He showed heart. He showed sadness. Um, deep, deep things. He wasn't just some dude that walks out like, I'm big. Kind of like what he did in uh, Riddick, even though I loved him in Riddick. He, he, he was perfect how he did Riddick, but in this, he was softer. He was more human And what he did. Uh, Ella Purnell and their relationship really worked out very well. Ana de la uh, Regura, uh, who is from Nacho Libre, I thought their story was very interesting. I kind of like their interaction with each other. And when you, as the story progresses, you do find out more about who they are. Vandero, which I won't say who he is, is actually uh, was pretty much my favorite character in the movie outside of this character named Chambers. I really like the character Chambers. It's, it's just something, which is when it was something about Chambers that just stood out to me for some reason. I don't know. And I thought it was really cool to see, you know, uh, Sonata in this. Look, anytime Sonata gets in a movie, I'm thumbs up. Okay. Him being Scorpion. Don't care which felt is great. He's a great actor, and I feel like I feel like he doesn't get enough due. <laughs> like he was amazing in the Wolverine. 
He was also in his quick MCU role as the Yakuza guy who fought Ronin, uh, uh, you know, Hawkeye's character. And I'm just like, not Ronin, the accuser, but Ronin, like Ninja Ronin. Nora Arnazita actually did a really good job. Like, everyone in the cast did an amazing job. Some of these characters really held things together, though. Uh, Batista was one. Ellen Purnell was another. Like I said, Anna, she was there because she had a good mix. My other favorite character was really cool. And Theo Rossi was in there. Uh, Nora Arnazita, she did a great job. She she was nice because she was the guide kind of thing. And she brought in a lot of different elements. And she was your storyteller, basically. Like, she was like, the zombies do this, and the zombies do that, and the zombies do this. Like, so they were like, we experienced it. She's like, no, I'm experienced in this. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, Tig Nataro, hands down, definitely brought the, the fun to the movie and kept it going and kept the uh, pace with it. Uh, with it being a $90 uh, million dollar budget, it looked like it was bigger. It looked like they could have easily spent a hundred and like twenty five to one hundred and fifty. And I know that may not seem like a lot from ninety, but trust me, it's a difference. You can tell the difference between a ninety million dollar movie and one hundred and fifty. Like the sets were great. Uh, it looks like some of it was in real casino, some of it was like not, and I think it was perfectly blended. There was no uncanny Candy valley. I saw they used practical, they used non practical. Uh, they. The zombies were very interesting because there was different levels to the zombies. And I thought all the actors brought it. You had your, like I said, your, your locksmith because it's a heist movie. And funny enough, I'm not really normally a fan of heist films. But this one, the way they did it, I liked how they, they actually accomplished it for the characters and who they were. Um, you got your crazy guy. You got your, you know, your military people. You got your other dude that looks like he was like more of a rescuer kind of thing um you got your inside man in the suit you got your wild cards so it had like all these different uh functions to it and i thought it was really cool now what's also interesting is that when you see the first like 15 minutes of the film right it, it was like dude that could have been a whole movie in itself like they show how the zombie apocalypse happens they show how to think and it's like you get to you get an overview of who these characters are, what they did, why were they there, and what they did. And they could have, and like for example, there is a character there who I thought was going to be throughout the film because the way they did it, and it was so excellently executed, how he did it. Where I'm like, wow, this character, and it's like setting up the whole thing, and then you find out, hey, the character didn't make it, but it felt like they put so much emphasis on the character, and it worked. Because I was like, who is this character? Oh, no, they didn't make it. And the first about 15, 20 minutes of the film, superb. Uh, how they set it up, how the zombie thing happens to what it is. You don't know exactly what the zombie thing is about, but you see how it is and how they had to quarantine off Las Vegas. Uh, there was touches of, especially in the beginning with some of the, the comedy. Uh, there was a little lights of com like comedy bits in there. Uh, just enough to sprinkle throughout that broke the tension of the film and I thought it was really good but the, some of the opening did remind me of Zombieland in a good way the first Zombieland um the zombies how some of them were moving reminded me of the the zombie film Devil's Playground if you haven't seen it it's a really cool zombie film I'm into zombie uh and monster films but I, I like zombies for the stories and stuff and I'll, I'll, I actually own the movie, so one of these days I'll review it. I also need to get my hands on Scout's, Scout's Guide. I, I need to see if I have it. If I don't, I'll like buy it, and then I'll review it on here uh, one day. It's just, uh, definitely, there were some elements of Dawn of the Dead with how they were like that field of that different type of zombie. Not too much, though. Uh, definitely had some Land of the Dead uh, feelings in it from and and Day of the Dead with the smarter zombies thing and land of the dead where the evolution of it like that there was touches of that in there um as well as there was a couple jokes 
that like felt like take pop shots at like the US and there was a character in there who was kind of sleazy and it, and, I, and I have to admit like I, I it was funny when you see why that character was there it fit I was like you know what I see why you put that character there at the same time it felt a little it felt a little pushed on that the, the agenda thing a little bit but for what that person did what they revealed that it was and how it did i'm not mad about it but it did kind of for a second i kind of caught it and like there was like a thing where there was like well this is in america hmm, then it's free well no america's free oh then this is freer like it was like these little funny pop shots uh but i understood why so not like hating on it it's just expect it it's not too much throughout the movie, but it's a little bit here and there, and it does kind of snip at you if you've been keeping your ears out for that kind of stuff lately. But it was it wasn't bad. Um, it also had a little bit of Z Nation feel, great zombie show uh, in itself as well, with certain little tidbits, but nothing where I was like, uh, but like who fell? That kind of reminded me of Z Nation. So it had these little tidbits, but yet it felt still unique to what it was. So even with these little elements in there, all these elements are good elements. It still was its movie. Another thing I liked was was that Zack Snyder doing this film, it what it didn't feel like a normal Zack Snyder movie. Like you know how everyone goes, oh he's so cinematic and he's so this. It felt more like Dawn of the Dead. In the sense that it was beautifully shot, the the the, the, the uh, special effects was great, the stuff was there, yet it didn't feel like your typical Zack Snyder films that people have come to know and gotten very used to. It it did it had beautiful setup shots and establishing shots and cinematography. Uh, the action work was there. From what I understand, I think I know Zack and his wife like was a producer. He wrote it. I think he he did the photography. I remember I was seeing his name on that. I think he was the director of photography. He did like the editing. He did some stuff. So this is like his film. Now, normally I love a unrated, uncut Zack Snyder movie. Uh, I loved my favorite Dawn of the Dead. I love watching the unrated version or director's cut. However, this movie is two hours and like twenty one minutes. The first half of the film, the first hour, I caught myself looking down and looking at certain stuff because I was doing it. They great character establishment. I want to get this straight. Great character establishment, uh, great story, but it started to borderline melodramatic. It was like, okay, I get who these characters are. You've set the stage. I know who uh, Batista is, like who Scott Ward is. I understand who Maria Cruz is now. I understand who. Uh, Vanderho is Kate Ward. Like it got to a point where I was like, ah, all right, okay. Uh, and for Tig Natero not being originally there, I think she really brought something there because especially when she they were she they were like, well, we got this job. He's like, yep, yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm for it. Like I, I liked how they did. It. I thought she was handled awesomely. So there are characters who anchor the story, but Batista did kind of take this movie a little bit on his back and with the other characters that he interacted with, I thought all of them played their parts so well. So this movie is limited to the theaters for a little bit with Netflix, even though it's funny because Netflix is doing theaters while theaters movies are trying to do streaming. But uh, if you can see it in the safe, I would definitely say see it. So I'm going to do this really quick i say that this is a high good time uh i had a very good time with it now i also will put this as a should buy if you are into zombie films and action zombie and stuff i definitely say do this because once you get past some of the stuff where i'm like looking at my thing a little bit i'm like okay it happened about two or three times when the movie kicks off that second half, it's forgiven. Like, it, it, it goes. And the other cool part, the reason why it reminds me a little bit of Devil's Playground, ah, uh, there's, a, like, how they, how the zombies move, especially the, there's, like, the shamblers, and then they're, they're like, well, these ones are different. They're like a tribe kind of thing. And it had some elements of I Am Legend with Will Smith. 
there was definitely some elements there that I looked at this and I was like, that reminds me of I Am Legend. So all these little, it felt like he took all these ideas, put them in the blender and came up with a nice smoothie. And the second half is great. The movie picks up, there's stories, there's stuff going on, why they're there, what's happening. It's like, man, this is wild. Now, I normally am totally 100% on board to see a director's full vision and to see Zack Snyder's full vision. Like I said, however, I felt the characters, it was like, once we got what they were, that's a flaw. It's like, so I'm telling you now, expect it to be a little bit of the, all right, come on, let's get to it. Like I said, once they do it, the rest of the movie is full throttle. Like, so once they go and they start to establish, like, Basically, from talking about the heist and everyone and the whole crew is together on, it, 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 it's we're off to the races. So, like I said, if you're not heavily into zombies, and the reason why I'm saying good time, if you're like, I'm tired of it, you, you would have a good time with it. If you are into zombie films, into zombie action films, action horror, a little bit of heist movies, and my personal thing, I'm going to say should buy. I'm going to put it as a rating of should buy. I thought Batista especially showed that he can be a leading man. And I'm noticing he's starting to get more roles as a leading man. Now he's getting knives out and stuff. Uh, I still have to watch that that one, My Spy. But I think it's good that he's getting it. And he's really developing a range and, and showing who he is. And his part in uh, 2049, Blade Runner, was... So he's really showing and coming in a long way in each film. There's raw emotion you see come out of him. And I was like, whoa, okay, I'm not, I'm not used to seeing Batista that way. And there's actual like stuff and there's softness. And I think, I think he did an excellent job. I really, really do. And I think you're going to overall like this movie. My personal rating, like I said, is a shit buy. I'm only giving the caveat because I'm trying to be nice for the people that... Because I know there's people who are like, I'm kind of getting tired of zombie films and zombie stuff. So that's why I would say, even with that, you would have a good time. But personally, it's a shit fight. Just to keep protagonists, you stay safe, you stay healthy, you stay real. Um, I, Zack Snyder's been knocking out the park this year. I hope we get some more Zack Snyder stuff. By the way, he did leave the door open that there could be a sequel. And I hope there's a sequel, but if I have my real wish, I really wish he would do that sequel to Dawn of the Dead. I know he had ideas, and I know he, like, had some stuff written up, because I remember him talking about it. But I would like to see him start delving into zombies and other genres. Even action genres, just... For a little while, let the superhero stuff rest. Maybe dig into some other comic book stuff, if you are. Like, get away from DC. I would like to see him touch some other properties that aren't as normalized and see what he does. All right, see ya.